Hello, and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. In this video, I'm going to explain why Rise with SAP has just killed the SAP Basis Administrator role as we know it, and provide some explanations of how technical tasks are slightly different in Rise. Buckle up, buttercup, it's going to get scary from here on. In three lines, explain Rise to me. Rise with SAP is a solution provided by SAP that includes the infrastructure hosting and technical administration of SAP applications under a single subscription-based contract. Okay, that was less than three lines. Is it really that simple? Yes, it is. Let me try and explain a typical scope of the role of SAP Basis Administrator before Rise. A typical SAP Basis Administrator role before Rise was scoped across infrastructure, technical and application layers. The infrastructure could be physical or virtual. Some larger companies divide this scope into specialist team areas with, for example, cloud teams administering the virtual machines, server administrators taking care of the operating system layer, and then finally SAP Basis only administering the SAP technical layer and upwards. By breaking up the SAP Basis role into smaller parts, recruitment of unicorns can be avoided at the expense of extra human administration, also known as HR. In my experience though, most companies are SMEs, and the SAP Basis Administrator has to be multidisciplined across all of these technical areas. Within these areas, SAP Basis Administrators typically handle the following tasks. Server provisioning, especially in cloud-hosted platforms, but can be VMware or even physical. Operating system installation, configuration administration, patching and upgrade. SAP system installation, technical configuration, technical administration, patching and upgrade. SAP application runtime, technical configuration and administration, and that is above the technical layer. What's different with RISE? Under a RISE with SAP subscription, the following tasks are now performed by SAP themselves. Server provisioning, which can be hosted in customer data center or hyperscaler. Operating system installation, configuration, administration, patching and upgrade. SAP system installation, technical configuration, technical administration, patching and upgrade. What remains for our typical basis administrator? SAP application runtime, technical configuration and administration, that is above the technical layer. Internally within SAP, they use the designation of SAP technical basis and SAP application basis to denote the differing scopes. Our typical basis administrator is now working solely in the SAP application basis scope. What if basis administrators need to see the operating system level? Under a Rise with SAP subscription, our typical basis administrator does not get access to the operating system at all, not even negotiable. They will need to rely on the capability of the SAP application to provide that level of information, which will be limited. The operating system is out of scope for SAP application basis. If the customer has some specific requirements for OS level task execution, then this can be requested to be executed by SAP. There is some form of provision for longer term OS task execution should it be required, but I suspect this is designed for certain integration scenarios, not the usual S4HANA tasks. What if basis administrators need to see the network set up? Under a Rise with SAP subscription, our typical basis administrator does not get access to the server networking. No cloud visibility, no VLANs, no diagrams, no SAP router, no VPNs, no Wireshark, no Netcat, no SSH tunnels, no X11, no, no, no. No, 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 no. no cloud visibility, no VLANs, no diagrams, no SAP router, no VPNs, no Wireshark, no Netcat, no SSH tunnels, no X11, no, no, no. Not even negotiable. They will need to rely on the capability of the SAP application to provide that level of information, which will be limited. The networking layer and its architecture is out of scope for SAP application basis. What if basis administrators need to see the backup and or DR setup? Under a Rise with SAP subscription, our typical basis administrator does not get access to the server backups or database backups. No diagrams, no policy visibility, no HANA cockpit with system user, no HANA studio with system user. Not even negotiable. They will need to rely on the capability of the SAP application to provide that level of information, which will be limited. The backup slash DR infrastructure and its architecture is out of scope for SAP application basis. Do you see where we're going with this? 
our typical basis administrator will need to rely on the capability of the SAP application. If the capability is not within the SAP application to display, for example, the IP address of the server, then that information is not visible to the basis administrator. Our typical basis administrator will need to request this information from SAP. If the capability is not within the SAP application to display, for example, the last backup of the database, then that information is not visible to the basis administrator. Our typical basis administrator will need to request this information from SAP. There is a slight difference between having access and having accountability and responsibility. Just because our typical basis administrator can no longer perform certain actions at certain levels, it does not detract from the accountability and responsibility in some of those areas. As an example, our typical basis administrator is still accountable to request ad hoc backups when the business require them due to exceptional processing. Maybe financial year end requires golden backups with retention for seven years. The SAP request processes are responsible for actioning the request. The key word in this example is request, and this will be repeated in a lot of places. Another example, our typical basis administrator is still accountable to request system refreshes when the business require them. The SAP request processes are responsible for actioning the request. Once the system has been refreshed, our typical basis administrator is still responsible to perform post copy steps at the application runtime layer. Okay, so is there a complete racy matrix for what is performed by SAP? There is a roles and responsibilities document that is frequently updated. Let's look at how you can get to that document, which is publicly available. We open the SAP website and navigate to the about page, www.sap.com slash about.html. On the About page, we select Security and Trust, then Agreements, then scroll down to select SAP Cloud Product Policies from the Cloud Services section. Then SAP S for HANA and Cloud ERP Services Documentation. Then we filter for roles and responsibilities and set the language to English. Then finally scroll down to the Rise with SAP S for HANA Cloud Private Edition and SAP ERP PCE Roles and Responsibilities. One thing to notice is we don't want the tailored option document that is a different document and is specifically for execution in a customer owned data center. For those interested, as an example, there is an option in the tailored document for HANA architectural changes from single node to multi node, but that option is not offered in the standard document. It's really no easy feat to get to this document, so I've put the link in the description down below. I've also included a link to the presentation on what the customer data center option delivers. A shortcut to this whole click fest is just to go to sap.com about agreements policies. From there, you can get to the SAP S for HANA Cloud and ERP Cloud Services documentation link, where you just need to filter for roles and responsibilities. Don't forget the English. The document has a table with a column with a unique identifier, which is referenceable in the request templates that our typical basis administrator would now use to raise a request with SAP. The important column is the responsibility column, where it says if the customer is responsible or not. Sometimes a task can be done by the customer, sometimes it can only be done by SAP. Sometimes the customer has to pay additional if they want SAP to do it. All those details are included in this column. It gets slightly more complicated because some of these optional tasks are agreed at contractual negotiation time. The lowly basis administrator may not know what has been agreed in the contract, but they will need to know. Otherwise, they may be doing tasks that SAP have been paid to do. At the very top of the roles and responsibilities document is a useful link to help.sap.com and a document that contains the process flows for different processes. There are flows for common tasks such as SAP kernel update, update database software, etc. There are not flows for every task though, some of them are not in this document. In the document there are some proposed service times, but these are caveated as usual. Here's the update database software process flow high level. What do you think about those time durations? Let me know in the comments down below. Remember, these are publicly available. As you have seen, the process flows all start with create service request. So how does our typical basis administrator raise a service request with SAP? That all gets done from within the SAP support portal, launchpad, me.sap.com, or whatever you want to call that today. If that portal is not available,
and your request has some level of urgency, then you will need to call SAP using something we used to call a telephone. Remember those? There are SLAs for SAP to complete certain requests, but typically it takes as long as it would have taken to do the task before Rise with SAP, but with some additional lead time. SAP do not perform any magic to get things done faster than anyone else. How does patching of the SAP application layer happen? The SAP application, for example, SAP S4HANA, will be upgraded slash patched by SAP. That means SAP will execute the upgrade tools. Patching planning is driven by our typical basis administrator, as they will be able to ensure a consistent stack of SAP and non-SAP components. An example of patching complexity during the planning is additional application functional libraries, or AFLs, for the HANA database, which are needed for things like SAP Analytics Cloud. These will also need to be specifically requested during HANA patching. In short, the typical basis administrator will need to be pretty hot on managing the requests and ensuring that SAP have all the required information in the request to ensure minimal effort during the patching. If components or items are missed from the request, then days could be lost before the patching process is completed. As well as planning the patching, our typical basis administrator is also responsible for pre- and post-patching upgrade tasks. Examples can include SPDD SPOW execution, cache resets, program regeneration, config backup slash restore. Don't forget the usual post-patching SAP notes that should be applied as well. These are listed in the side effect reports, but it is not SAP's responsibility to action these, even if SAP have applied the patches. What happens if a performance problem is seen? SAP will work to identify if the performance issue is within their scope of support in the technical layers. Outside of these areas, it will be up to our typical basis administrator to determine where in the application the performance problem lies. The issue can be raised with SAP as a message slash incident in the usual process. Through RISE, the customer can choose to pay for additional performance analysis and optimization, but this is more of a proactive approach, and I would not want to be relying on this for getting urgent attention on a hot performance problem. Are SAP security notes applied? As part of standard services, SAP will automatically analyze SAP security notes and advise if they are relevant. SAP security notes of the ABAP and BASIS components with no manual actions can be implemented into the dev system by SAP on request. The customer can pay for SAP to implement ABAP and BASIS related notes that have manual tasks or for implementation of security notes of other modules. Our typical BASIS administrator will need to apply security notes that are exceptions to the above. What if an SAP note is requested to be applied by a functional person? A little contentious, but SAP notes are applied using the usual method by our typical basis administrator. SAP notes of the ABAP and basis components with no manual actions can be implemented into the dev system by SAP on request. Any notes with manual actions will need to be implemented by our typical basis administrator. You can see from the above that the easy tasks are all bundled and taken care of by SAP themselves, especially at the technical layers. Once you get into the application administrative areas, that is where the typical basis administrator will still need to be involved. What about a new system installation and landscape? This is where some customers may get caught out. In this specific case, the customer will need to provide and sign off on the infrastructure sizings. If our typical basis administrator now only performs application runtime technical administration, then the customer may be thinking that they no longer need infrastructure knowledge. Yet the roles and responsibilities document from SAP clearly states that sizing of new systems and landscapes, especially non-SAP, is done by the customer. It's the same if a non-SAP application is requested to be set up by the customer. SAP will do the actual work, but it will need to be technically designed and sized by the customer. How is this going to be managed by our typical basis administrator? At this stage, even I am not clear how this function will work, but it's possible that a small contingent of what I'm calling cloud mega basis will be needed to provide this function in a project guise, just like they do in a brand new RISE implementation or migration. This cloud mega basis is a technical basis role with architecture and infrastructure knowledge but maybe less emphasis on the technical application layer. These skills will be expensive. I mean, they are now. So this is likely to be an architect level role. 
In the rise with SAP roles, this person is known as a partner cloud architect, as they are usually employed by the SAP partner that is performing the rise with SAP migration slash implementation. But at a customer level, this role may not exist with the same title. It's time to wrap this video up. Is Basis dead? Not really, at least not for many more years yet. I think the SAP Basis role as we know it changed with the creation of Rise with SAP. Not all customers will immediately go with a Rise deal, but eventually all customers will. Maybe not in two, maybe not even in five years, but in 10 years, I see all customers being Rise customers. The Basis role will live on in a more application focused guise and will encompass some of the SaaS based application tasks, such as BTP administrative tasks, cloud connected connectivity, cloud ALM connectivity, and other integration tasks. But Basis administrators of the future will not be doing operating system administration, traditional database administration, or installs and upgrades of SAP application software. Those tasks will be taken care of by SAP. The application stack will morph slowly into a SaaS based application. Of course, SAP, the company and its partners will need technical people to help deliver the RISE service. So maybe our classical basis administrator, and I'm going to call it that, it's either classical or legacy and I feel classical implies more prestige. Maybe our classical basis administrator will end up working for SAP. What's next for classical basis administrators? The typical basis role just got absolutely hammered by RISE with SAP and now AI is banging at the door. Stay tuned for another video where I'll explain what basis administrators should do to mitigate this whole fight and how to evolve into cloud mega basis. The best way to not miss this video is to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out. You'll just need to click my logo in the bottom right and then click subscribe. It's that easy. As always, reference links are in the description. Drop me a comment down below, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and always wash your hands after leaving the cubicle. Bye bye.